Good morning, everybody. So everybody struggles a little bit with this week's Torah portion, and rightfully so, because the main part of this week's portion is a very detailed, long description of the terror and tri trials and horrors that will befall the Jewish people when we fail to live up to our end of the covenant and we are forced to leave the land. And it's very scary. And it goes on and on and on. There's actually an interesting custom that in many synagogues, the person who's reading this part of the Torah reads it very fast and very quietly, almost like so no one can hear it and comprehend it. Although there's a story that I heard about one of the great, great post-Holocaust leaders of American Jewry. He was known as the Kloisenberger Rebbe. He came from the town of Kloisenberg. And he experienced the worst horrors of the Holocaust. His wife and I think maybe 11 of his children were murdered by the Nazis. He survived and he came to America. And his custom in his synagogue was to read these verses loud and clear. And when somebody asked him why he's varying from the normal custom, he said, because we have nothing to be afraid of anymore. We can listen to these verses because they all took place already. These terrible predictions of the horrors and, and terrifying experiences that the Jewish people would have all transpired already. They happened in the Holocaust. We no longer have anything to worry about. That period of Jewish history is over. Now, I love that story, but I'm struggling with it because of what's happened here in the last year and so much of what's written in the Tochacha, in the rebuke, we've seen happen with our own eyes. And it's a very hard time. This is the first time we're reading this since October 7th, and it's not easy to get through. And I was, as I was reading it and going through some of the verses, I was struck by one particular verse, which just sent, you know, a terrible feeling through my entire body. And the verse says, describing again, what's gonna happen, what the Jewish people are going to experience when we haven't returned and restored the level of connection to Hashem that we're trying to, that we're yearning for. There's a verse that says, your sons and your daughters will be taken by another people and your eyes will see and pine in vain for them. And Rashi explains that he says that what this means is that we'll be waiting for them, we'll be watching for them, we'll be yearning for them to return and come home and they won't come back. And if this is not being what, what, what Amisra, what the Jewish people are experiencing right now, I don't know what is. So we read these verses and they're hard and we read them quietly and we read them fast because we don't really want to grapple with them and, and confront them. But we have to because we're living in very challenging times. But the hope, there's always got to be hope. The Jewish people are whole. Everything is built on hope, tikva. The hope is what it says in the very, very beginning of the rebuke, right before this long list of terror and horrible, horrible events is, is enumerated. The Torah says, Hashem will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be struck down before you. On one road, they will go towards you and on seven roads, they will flee before you. Please God, may we see the blessings, the blessings and the end of this ter terrible period of time that we're living. We're living Jewish history right now. We're living the pages of the Torah right now. And we want to see this blessing from the Torah, that our enemies will fall before us and they'll flee and they'll run away. And finally, please God, the Jewish people will be able to live in our land to fulfill our purpose and our mission to be a light unto the nations and to bring a, the world to a, a much, much better place. We need to get there, we need to get there fast. Wishing everyone a wonderful Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom from Yerushalayim.